Hi, this is Jim. Angel Island is this wonderful state park at the north end of the San Francisco Bay. And it's ideal for boaters because you can only reach it by boat. And there are slips you can rent for day use and also moorings if you want to spend overnight. However, it, it turns out Angel Island is a really challenging place to either dock or moor. Com it's a combination of often gusty winds and a uh, unusual circular current that set up there and can frequently be pretty strong. So in this video I'll explain why those conditions exist and then techniques you can use to make uh, docking at Angel Island safer and uh, a lot of fun. All of the facilities for boaters and the small cafe that serves uh, great meals during the summer months, they're all located at a Yala Cove, and that's named after the captain of the first western vessel to enter the bay back in 1775. The reason for the currents is that um, the mouth of Ayala Cove faces right into Raccoon Strait, and so when there's a flood tide, you basically get the current driven inside the bay from one side, and it spins up sort of like um, a little child pushing on the wheel of a, a small car. And of course the opposite happens on an ebb tide, so it's very common when you enter the bay to have one current going one way as you enter and find the opposite current as you near the docks. Now Rangers told me he's seen currents as high as six knots inside of the bay. I've never seen anything quite that high, but certainly three knots isn't uncommon and the orientation of the slips, the currents will be from the side. Now you can minimize your trouble if you can time your arrival and departure for that matter at slack tide. Um, when you're mooring, because of the shallow depth, you'll prefer high slack, but the depths around the um, slips are, are such that you probably won't need to worry about high or low, but slack tide is always better. If you can't time it for slack tide, then you've got to deal with the currents. The way the slips are set up is that they're half slips, and unfortunately between each of the two slips is a large wooden pole, and these serve no purpose other than to scratch boats, and they really become a significant obstacle. So when you're approaching the docks, the first thing to do is to figure out which way the current is setting. If there are other boats in the slips, this is pretty easy because you can just see to which side the lines are being pulled. If the boats are being pulled to port, then you want to pick a slip so that the, t the current pushes you into the slip. You'll be tying up port side. And of course the opposite's true. If the boats are being pushed to starboard, then pick a slip where you can tie up on your starboard side. And because of the circular currents, the mooring field is set up with two buoys per boat, and they're color-coded. So if you see a, a red stripe on one buoy, the, the other buoy you'll tie up to will also have a red stripe. And your objective in tying up is to have two lines, fore and aft, and each line making a V going, running through the ring on the buoy, and then back to your own boat. And this, because of fore and aft mooring, you won't have any problems with chafe. And this makes it real easy to leave later because you don't have a knot on the buoy. You just untie your line, pull it through the ring, and you're free to go. Most people I see now are using these wonderful devices, Rob Ship Hook and Moor, to get the line through the ring of the buoy. And this ingenious device makes that really simple, even from a boat with pretty high freeboard. So I strongly suggest you invest in one of those. Now, now the, the problem with um, tying fore and aft is it's real easy to get one attached, or relatively easy, but getting the second one is tough. And it's usually um, not possible to back from a bow <coughs> tied to a stern tie because you don't have any steerage, at least with a single screw boat. 
you won't have any steerage in reverse. So one approach to docking is to tie up, or to mooring, is to tie up to your stern line first and then have the uh, crewman go up um, to the bow and motor forward while letting out your stern line and you'll have prop wash over your rudder so you'll be able to control the boat, get up to the, the bow mooring, attach that, and then cinch the lines. The risk in doing this, and this has happened a number of times, is people get that um, stern line wrapped around their prop. And this can be cat cat catastrophic. Uh, not only will it damage your engine, but in extreme cases, the torque of the engine will actually pull the engine through the bottom of the boat and sink the boat very rapidly. So you really don't want to have that stern line get around the prop. Now if you have three or more people, just assign one person the job of keeping a slight tension on the stern line and you're out of trouble. But they have to be warned not to be distracted by what else is going on. That's their sole job. Um, personally, I find that problematic since we're normally docking with only two people. So the approach we take is similar, but we use a dinghy to do the final step. So the first step is to tie the boat up and a stern line and tie it quite close to the buoy. And that makes the boat safe. It's not going to go anywhere. And then what I do is get in the dinghy, attach the bow line, and then cinch the lines to the center of the boat. And this makes it really safe because there's never a situation where you've got a slack line at the stern. You're never going to get the, uh, the line around the prop. Okay, well, I hope this helps and certainly enjoy your time on Angel Island. It's about a seven mile walk around the island, not, not very steep. Or if you're more adventuresome, climb up to the top of Mount Livermore. It's gorgeous views. There's also a number of historical sites there ranging from the Civil War up until the Cold War. So have fun. <laughs>